You think you've got this little unspoken thing going on with him talking books and all that intellectual rubbish? Yeah, I can see that would be difficult for you. Your pathetic sideways glances at him every time he's near you, trying to get him to notice you. Well, guess what? He doesn't notice you. He doesn't care less about you. Right. That's why I was at my house last night. Well, you invited him. And he felt sorry for you. You are so obvious. Trying to be there for him, trying to get him to notice you, trying to get him to open up and say that he needs you. Well, he won't. You two, get inside. No, could you follow? It might be prudent to stay. Both of you. Now, move. Go. Just because you're miserable doesn't mean that he has to be. He's happier with me than he ever, ever has been with you. Oh, don't compare us, Isabel. It's just boring. <laughs> I don't need to compare. Have you seen yourself lately? Oh, get over yourself. You know, you're going to get older, you're going to get wrinkles. Although, I would have thought your looks would have kept Carl amused for longer than this. Then I suppose that's why girls like you get around so much. Just no conversation. You stink of jealousy. You know, you really need to change the record. We all know you can rant and rave. What we want to know is, can you fetch him bed? Oh, shut up. Well, you're going to have to do something. Carl and I have a very long history. Does he still find me sexy? Gee, I don't know. What does it mean when a man comes to your bedroom door in the middle of the night? You are so poisonous. Oh, and, um, Isabel, that little thing you've got going with Paul, you should be very careful. These little affairs always get out. It's almost as if they're written in the sky. Thanks, Izzy. I feel so much better now.